The slaves of sin rarely grumble at that slavery. It is their slavery to God they grumble at. Of that alone they complain. Of the painful messengers he sends to deliver them from their slavery both to sin and to himself. They must be sons or slaves. They cannot rid themselves of their owner. Whether they deny God or mock him by acknowledging and not heeding him, or treat him as an arbitrary formal monarch, whether, taking no trouble to find out what pleases him, they do dull things for his service he cares nothing about, or try to propitiate him by assuming with strenuous effort some yoke the sun never wore, and never called on them to wear, they are slaves, and not the less slaves that they are slaves to God. They are so thoroughly slaves that they do not care to get out of their slavery by becoming sons and daughters, by finding the good of life where alone it can or could lie. Could a creator make a creature whose well-being should not depend on himself? And if he could, would the creature be greater for that? Which, the creature he made more, or the creature he made less dependent on himself, would be the greater? the slave in heart would immediately with milton satan reply that the farthest from him who made him must be the freest thus acknowledging his very existence as slavery and but two kinds in being a creator and as many slaves as he pleases to make whose refusal to obey is their unknown protest against their own essence being itself must for what they call liberty be repudiated creation itself to go by their lines of life is an injustice god had no right to create beings less than himself and as he could not create equal he ought not to have created but they do not complain of having been created they complain of being required to do justice they will not obey but his own handiwork ravish from his work every advantage they can they desire to be free with another kind of freedom than that with which God is free. Unknowing, they seek a more complete slavery. There is, in truth, no midway between absolute harmony with the Father and the condition of slaves, submissive or rebellious. If the latter, their very rebellion is by the strength of the Father in them. Of divine essence, they thrust their existence in the face of their essence, their own nature yet is their very rebellion in some sense but the rising in them of his spirit against their false notion of him against the lies they hold concerning him they do not see that if his work namely they themselves are the chief joy to themselves much more might the life that works them be a glory and joy to them who are the work inasmuch as it is nearer to them than they to themselves causing them to be and extends without breach of relation so infinitely above and beyond them for nothing can come so close as that which creates the nearest strongest dearest relation possible is between creator and created where this is denied the schism is the widest where it is acknowledged and fulfilled the closeness is unspeakable but ever remains what cannot be said and i sink defeated the very protest of the rebel against slavery comes at once of the truth of god in him which he cannot all cast from him and of a slavery too low to love truth a meanness that will take all and acknowledge nothing as if his very being was a disgrace to him the liberty of god that would have his creature free is in contest with the slavery of the creature who would cut his own stem from his root that he might call it his own and love it who rejoices in his own consciousness instead of the life of that consciousness who poises himself on the tottering wall of his own being instead of the rock on which that being is built such a one regards his own dominion over himself the rule of the greater by the less inasmuch as the conscious self is less than the self as a freedom infinitely greater than the range of the universe of god's being if he says at least i have it my own way i answer you do not know what is your way and what is not 
You know nothing of whence your impulses, your desires, your tendencies, your likings come. They may spring now from some chance, as of nerves diseased, now from some roar of a wandering bodiless devil, now from some infant hate in your heart, now from the greed of lawlessness or some ancestor you would be ashamed of if you knew him, or it may be now from some far-piercing chord of a heavenly orchestra. The moment it comes up into your consciousness, you call it your own way and glory in it. Two devils amusing themselves with the duet of inspiration, one at each ear, might soon make that lordly me you are so in love with rejoice in the freedom of willing the opposite each alternate moment, and at length drive you mad at finding that you could not, will as you would, make choice of a way and its opposite simultaneously. The whole question rests and turns on the relation of creative and created of which relation few seem to have the consciousness yet developed. To live without the eternal creative life is an impossibility. Freedom from God can only mean an incapacity for seeing the facts of existence, an incapability of understanding the glory of the creature who makes common cause with his creator in his creation of him, who wills that the lovely will calling him into life and giving him choice should finish making him, should draw him into the circle of the creative heart, to joy that he lives by no poor power of his own will, but is one with the causing life of his life, in closest breathing and willing, vital and claimant oneness with the life of all life. Such a creature knows the life of the infinite Father as the very flame of his life, and joys that nothing is done or will be done in the universe in which the Father will not make him all of a sharer that it is possible for perfect generosity to make him. If you say this is irreverent, I doubt if you have seen the God manifest in Jesus. But all will be well. For the little god of your poor content will starve your soul to misery, and the terror of the eternal death creeping upon you will compel you to seek a perfect father. O oh, ye hide-bound Christians, the Lord is not straitened, but ye are straitened in your narrow, unwilling souls. Some of you need to be shamed before yourselves. Some of you need the fire. <laughs> 